Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining PICRA today. My name is Michelle Rafani. I'm a member of Toronto Real Estate Board and a proud volunteer of Professional Iranian Real Estate Association, PICRA. I would like to acknowledge all of PICRA's hardworking volunteers behind the scene who make all of this possible for us and all PICRA members. It's my honor to be your host today to present Mr. David Jazairi Mogadas, founder of Prime Service Insurance. Mr. Jazairi has obtained his insurance license since 2003. And in 2012, he opened his very first um, insurance brokerage, Prime Service Insurance, which is the first Iranian Canadian brokerage in Ontario servicing our community with all types of different insurance services, which he will be explaining to us shortly. Please feel free to participate in today's webinar by typing in all of your comments and questions into the chat box. Welcome, Mr. Jazairi. How are you today? Thank you very much. How are you? Good. Excellent. Thank you. We're honored to have you today, and we look forward to your presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I start, I would like to uh, thank you, all of the PICRO board members. Uh, volunteers and members, uh, what you're doing is an, an amazing, uh, an amazing job in uh, this uncertainty time and this uh, difficult time for everybody. The most important thing for everybody is uh, having knowledge and having information. And what you're doing is uh, a, a great, uh, amazing job. And thank you for including me. It's my honor to be uh, uh, with you today. Thank and you. I would uh, also acknowledge uh, all of the hardworking men and women that uh, make uh, our environment safe, uh, from doctors to nurses to all of the medical uh, teams working in the hospitals and different places, and also other people that they get a little bit less acknowledgement, including the food chain, uh, uh, truck drivers, uh, grocery store uh, employees, and everybody else. Uh, uh, that, that's important to always remember. Uh, those hard work makes our life much safer. Uh, now, about insurance and uh, the environment that we have right now. Uh, in just a few short days, or uh, we can say, in uh, in Canada, the life, the way that we knew it has changed. Uh, the, the businesses had to, had to close, and uh, people got laid off or had to sit home and uh, couldn't uh, couldn't continue the way uh, their job or their life the way that they uh, they were uh, doing. And insurance is not uh, exception either. Insurance is. Uh, uh, the same as uh, the same as every other uh, job. Although the insurance uh, is uh, considered uh, an essential work, and we didn't have to close the offices and we are working, but uh, uh, but it's get affected. And uh, today I'm here to explain the different effects that this uh, change had in our uh, industry and also what we are doing about it, uh, either uh, us as a brokers or the insurance companies or other stakeholders in this, uh, in this uh, uh, business. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the effect that this uh, change in uh, customers or consumers had, uh, the people didn't go, couldn't go to, uh, to work. People lost their jobs, so uh, they didn't. Uh, businesses had to close. They didn't uh, use their car. They didn't uh, had a, a, a business to insure. Or uh, the changes that uh, everybody is seeing as a, a, a personal change in their life. Uh, what we are experiencing as an insurance broker is uh, exactly the same. We are. Uh, although we are essential, as I mentioned, but uh, uh, because of the safety and because of the uh, uh, security of uh, and health of every every member of the community, including our own staff and our own employees, we had to uh, change the workflow and uh, change the lifestyle that we had. We are start working from home, and that's that's creates uh, uh, challenges uh, for everybody, including. Uh, 
uh, including us uh, and uh, including all of the staff and it, uh, all of our brokers. What, uh, uh, what we have done is, uh, uh, as, as far as uh, uh, the brokerage is in, in uh, concern and all of the brokers that they are working with us is concerned, is that uh, uh, due to uh, uh, the new situations, we had to start working from home. And that creates some challenges for us. Uh, uh, like any other professional business, we have to uh, we have to uh, follow the guidelines that our uh, governing body is dictating us. There are some restrictions that when we are not in the office, we have to uh, to uh, to follow them. And uh, with uh, Applying those restrictions to, to what we had was uh, at first a little bit challenging, but uh, we, we finally uh, get everything done and now everything, everything is working from, uh, from home. Uh, the same challenge is actually uh, facing the insurance companies. Uh, they are, uh, most of them, they are working from home. They have some uh, few uh, staff at home, and, I'm sorry, at, in the office, and, but, but the rest had to, uh, to uh, to apply the social distancing rules that it's uh, uh, is uh, uh, in the in the society it, it's mandatory by government and uh, all of them or most of them are working from home uh, this is what what is facing us but what i'm going to talk today uh, is more about what's facing the uh, community the public uh, the consumer uh, Mm, uh, the, um, the, the lifestyle of, of everybody has changed based on what they are facing right now. People are not driving their cars to work anymore. People are, uh, 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 some of the businesses have to close because of this uh, uh, new situation that we have. Some of the business uh, businesses had to uh, uh, apply the work from home uh, rules in their office or in their in their workflow, and this has uh, a, a, a very uh, profound effect on day-to-day -day activities that uh, and peop uh, that people are doing, and also has a profound uh, effect on the uh, uh, insurance that they are uh, uh, they they had to have. Now, if you are not driving your car. Uh, you uh, you still have to pay for your car insurance, and uh, that's that's uh, these are the things that I'm going to talk about a little bit more, and what the insurance companies are doing to help people to uh, uh, to deal with this situation. Uh, the the helps that the insurance or the relief uh, uh, efforts that the insurance companies are offering to to public are in different sections. And I'm going to go one by one by each section or by each uh, category. And uh, hope, uh, hopefully if I miss something, if somebody asks questions, we are going to clear it even more. Uh, hopefully I don't miss anything, but if we, if we miss anything, we, uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, uh, please jump in and have your question ready. Uh, I start with uh, uh, home insurance. Uh, that's one of the insurances that everybody pays, and it's maybe more related to uh, what the uh, uh, what Picra is offering to people, uh, uh, the realtor uh, office. Uh, home insurance basically didn't have any uh, change. There is no uh, changes for home insurance. Home, home is the home, and there is no uh, change in the insurance as far as the needs or requirements because of the new situation. Uh, however, some insurance companies, because they wanted to provide some relief to the customers, are offering some discounts for uh, home insurance as well as the car insurance. For the car insurance, there are several things that uh, uh, people can use to, to save some, uh, some dollar on the insurance uh, that they are paying. Uh, some of these options were available even before uh, COVID-19, and it, it's not related to situation that we are facing. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they are available, and some people, because they never use them or they never actually face the scenario that they need to use them, 
uh, are not aware of them. I'm going to talk about them a little bit, but some uh, reliefs are available because of the COVID-19, and these are the exceptions that or the the the, uh, the, uh, the new uh, uh, programs that the insurance companies put in place. Uh, one of the first things that somebody can do if they are not working and they are not using their car is uh, to park their car and park the insurance. What we are doing, what we are calling it in our industry is a comp only. Comp only means that you uh, remove most of your coverage. Your uh, car is not allowed to drive, doesn't, doesn't have insurance to drive, but uh, or you, can allow, you cannot drive your car but the car has insurance for theft and fire and some other uh, 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 some other uh, risks that, that that might happen uh, or some other claims that might happen this is basically the cheapest uh, kind of uh, option for people and uh, it it gives uh, a policy uh, holder probably something around 70 75 to maybe sometimes 80 to 90 percent discount to their annual uh, annual premium uh, however in this case you cannot drive your car uh, the other option that is available is a little bit more expensive and some insurance companies in a normal scenario make it mandatory they don't offer comp insurance but they offer something uh, uh, as an alternative and that's what we are calling opcf 16. And I explain a little bit about that. Uh, when you are buying a car insurance, part of that car insurance is uh, accident benefit claim. It means that if you get involved in an accident, uh, the insurance company will cover uh, your medical uh, invoices, medical bills, whatever the insurance, whatever the, your uh, provincial uh, health plan, plan doesn't doesn't cover. Uh, this uh, accident benefit is available even if I'm not driving my car, even if I'm a, a, a passenger of somebody else's car, or if I'm bo borrowing somebody else's car and I'm driving it, or even if I'm a, a pedestrian or bus uh, a passenger in a bus. Uh, that accident benefit that my home, my uh, sorry, my uh, personal car insurance has will be available even with those in those scenarios and uh, that's to protect me even if i'm not driving my car uh, it's protect me to uh, uh, from from expenses of or medical expenses of uh, a potential accident and a, a medical uh, need uh, when we put the car on comp only or we park the coverage uh, we park the car that accident benefit disappears uh, what insurance companies are offering is that uh, in order to keep that accident benefit, in case that you are driving somebody else's car or you are a passenger, a passenger in, a, uh, in somebody else's car, uh, so uh, what they do is they offer an alternative to comp only and they offer OPCF 16, which is a, a parked car plus accident benefit. And obviously, because it has more coverage than just uh, some uh, incidents that might happen to your car, definitely is more expensive. So the, the saving that a customer has when they use OPCF 16 uh, is uh, probably between 50 to 60 or maybe 70% of their annual premium. So if you are not using your car during COVID-19, these two options are available. At the beginning, insurance companies, or before COVID-19, insurance companies were trying to get rid of uh, or get away from comp only because OPCF 16 was a big part of uh, litigations and the, uh, uh, the accident, lack of accident benefit created some uh, legal problems for the insurance companies and for the customers. So the insurance companies were pushing for OPCF 16. However, due to COVID-19, and due to new restrictions that uh, the social distancing uh, uh, applies to our day-to-day -day job, job oh, sorry, day-to-day -day lives, uh, the insurance companies are now more lenient and they accept uh, comp even more. But uh, still, if uh, an insurance company make it mandatory or somebody uh, says, you know what, we, we, uh, we need to keep that accident benefit, still OPCF 16 is available and uh, offering uh, some saving for the customers. Uh, I have to point out that uh, uh, 
these two options are available only on owned cars and only on uh, uh, finance cars. A leased car uh, are uh, not eligible for these uh, uh, two options because the uh, when we are leasing a car, it's like basically we are renting a car and because the car doesn't belong to us, it's somebody else's car, we don't have power to make a decision about the insurance of that car. They have mandatory uh, uh, requirements for that insurance and we have to follow with that mandatory insurance and we have to uh, uh, we have to listen what the leasing company has. So for the lease cars, you have to contact your leasing companies. Normally, leasing companies are not uh, uh, are not uh, uh, considering that change in a, in a coverage. But uh, recently, uh, after COVID-19, I have seen some uh, leasing companies that they are uh, they are offering and they are more flexible with uh, with the customers. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, if you have a leased car, you have to contact your leasing company to see if you can or if this option is available to you. If, if not, then uh, unfortunately you can't, uh, you can't put the car on comp or OPCF 16. Uh, these, are, these two options were available even before uh, COVID-19 uh, for customers that they have, uh, uh, they are going for a long trips or uh, uh, for a, or a period of time, sometimes uh, a certain car, you don't want to drive it in winter because of the type of the car. Uh, those options were available. But uh, uh, the new uh, relief that the insurance companies are offering for uh, for customers uh, is uh, uh, a kind of a refund, premium refund. And each insurance company has their own type of uh, uh, premium refund options that they are uh, providing to, to customers. And if you... Uh, uh, if you want to know what your insurance company is doing, the best thing is to uh, contact your broker or contact your insurance company and find out what they have to offer. As far as uh, uh, the insurance companies that I'm working with them, they are uh, they are things that uh, or the, the reliefs that they have is uh, is from uh, five percent uh, monthly or five percent. Uh, for two months or three month uh, uh, premium discount to 25% of one month discount. Uh, each insurance company has their own, their own okay, release. Mr. Jazairi, um, since we are on the topic of auto insurance, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of questions. Sure. And, uh, we have a question. If uh, different insurance companies perform differently during these times and is it possible to defer auto insurances yes yeah most of the insurance companies are offering deferred payments yeah. however it's a, it's a deferred payment it's not a forgiven payment uh, some insurance companies or uh, uh, they offering one or two month uh, option they basically go one month by month because they don't know how long this situation will last but sure. uh, 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 some companies they say, okay, you you can have one or two month uh, uh, premium uh, uh, deferred to the next month, and the month after they offer they, they are asking for the full premium for all of the two or three months. And but most of the insurance company companies what they do, they offer a relief for one or two months, and what they do they will uh, divide the uh, those payments in the remaining payments of the policy. So if I am in the middle of policy and I have six more payments and I have deferred $200 or uh, uh, to make it uh, easier for calculation, $180 uh, deferred payment, they divide it by six and they add $30 to my monthly payments. So uh, the good thing about for that- For the rest is, of the term of your insurance. Exactly. The yeah. good thing about this uh, uh, deferred program is unlike banks, there is no extra interest that people should pay. It's just the pure deferred. Correct. And uh, uh, one insurance company even came up with the solution that they offer 10% discount to every policy holder that they have. Uh, uh, that's on home and auto uh, as well. So uh, if you want to defer, you still can defer. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to defer or you want to just use your uh, uh, use your uh, uh, 
uh, uh, that 10% discount, you can do that, and that's uh, and that's what uh, what the insurance company is offering. Uh, and I have to add that most of the insurance companies, or uh, actually all of them, have uh, stopped uh, charging NSF fees. You know, in past, in a regular situation, if you uh, miss a payment, there is a uh, extra fee that the insurance company is charging. Uh, they remove that for this uh, uh, COVID, uh, for this uh, uh, emergency situation that we have. And also, uh, they are not going to cancel the policy if somebody missed their payment. And that's again something that they are doing only for this uh, uh, for this time. Normally, if you miss your payment, they give you uh, a certain amount of time to pay the missed payment, and plus that uh, NSF fee. Otherwise, your policy get cancelled. They stop cancelling uh, uh, policies altogether. And uh, if customers don't pay, uh, they don't charge them NSF fee. So uh, that's that's what they do uh, as uh, as their part to to help people with uh, uh, with the financial strength uh, with, with the financial uh, uh, restrictions that everybody is facing because of this uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. financial situation that we are. In. We're getting a lot of questions on uh, deferred payments. Pretty sure. much from all types of different insurance, and a lot of it goes back to especially life insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be able to explain a little bit as far as whether everything that you explain with regards to auto insurance, whether it's about all of the insurance policies, or that was just for auto insurance? Um, no, this is for auto insurance, and some of some of the insurance company, as I mentioned, for home insurance. Uh, but uh, but no, for life insurance it's a little bit different. There are two, uh, there are few type of life insurance available, and uh, not not all of them are uh, are offering any deferred payment option. Uh, so the, the begin policy, by life insurance and explaining that to us a little bit because we have a lot of interest on that right now. Sure. Uh, uh, the type of the life insurance that somebody has is uh, basically uh, dictating what type of flexibility that policy has, what type of flexibility that policy owner has. Uh, as far as I know, and I didn't see anything so far, that no insurance company, no life insurance company offers any deferred payment. Uh, what they are facing is uh, basically the life insurance contract is that you pay or the, the policy owner pays a certain amount of uh, payment on a, uh, as a premium on a monthly basis and the insurance company offers a lump sum payment in case uh, that person passes away uh, and because we are going through some uh, health issues uh, the insurance companies are not going to take away that uh, premium that they are collecting because most likely they have to pay for some of those uh, that, that they, it happens right now because of the uh, uh, COVID-19. So they are not offering any uh, uh, premium relief or deferred options, but some type of the life insurance uh, policies have uh, some flexibility because they have cash value and that cash value can be used. Uh, so the customer can stop paying, the insurance policy doesn't get canceled, but it is not something that the insurance company has offered only for this time. It's something that's it's always available for that policy uh, holder. So uh, they don't have a special relief. So they don't have a special relief. They don't. They don't have a special ready for for this uh, for this time. And what happens if somebody has had life insurance for the past ten years, let's say, and all of a sudden they cannot afford it because? loss of job or anything else that they cannot afford to pay for it? Uh, what I recommend they do, they talk to their broker or they talk to their insurance company. Uh, there are flexibilities from insurance company. It's case by case. It's not a rule. It's the, the deferred payment with insurance, uh, the car insurance uh, companies, it's a rule. You don't pay, it's get deferred automatically for the next month. They don't have an SF fee. They don't have a they don't have the power to cancel your policy. But for life insurance, uh, it should be and it must be uh, communicated with the insurance company. And if that insurance company offers an special, uh, uh, a special treatment for uh, one policy or one group of policy owners, 
uh, that's uh, that's what they are doing. But there is no uh, in place rule that we say, okay, uh, that's that's what it is, and people can can stop paying their life insurance policy. Excellent. And um, one question that we've had from a few different uh, people is, um, is COVID-19 a claimable disease on critical illness insurance? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to say yes or no. Uh, it should not be because it's a resp uh, respiratory uh, illness and uh, uh, as far as i know that is not part of critical illness uh, however because that's a new illness uh, again talk to your broker talk to your insurance company get that uh, information from the insurance company directly Okay, so there is no answer for it at this point. Uh, so as far as I know, it's not covered as a critical illness, but uh, each insurance company can talk about that. Uh, when, when we are talking about critical illness or life insurance, uh, even for home and auto insurance, when there is a claim, uh, there is uh, lots of behind the scene decisions that the insurance company adjusters should, should make. And those adjusters are uh educated for that purpose only they are uh, getting trained and uh, licensed for that purpose only so even with car insurance home insurance that we are dealing with the claim on a day-to-day -day basis we can't 100 percent say something is covered or not covered uh, because we are not the adjuster we can't uh, make a decision for insurance company we can say with a, 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 a percentage or degree of certainty that yes this happened and i'm certain or i'm 90 percent certain that uh, the coverage is there for you but we are not the decision maker because even a normal accident that everybody buy car insurance to have that accident covered it could be some information behind the scene that I don't see. And uh, uh, that information makes the insurance company to say, no, it's not covered. For example, if I'm driving when I am uh, uh, under influence of drug or alcohol, the insurance company doesn't cover. But right. as a simple question, I have an accident, do you have coverage? Yes, you have coverage because you have car insurance. So, is that more written in the contracts when you sign up for any uh, sort of insurance? Because from the background that we come from with real estate and being in real estate for over 10 years, everything is written in your contract pretty much. Is that the same thing with the contracts as far as when it comes to insurance and what you sign up for? It, it is in the contract, but uh, the contract of uh, insurance is uh, or has lots of ex uh, exceptions. Lot, lots of exclusions and uh, there are uh, because there are some life circumstances that the insurance company cannot predict from uh, uh, from when you buy the insurance uh, there are no uh, uh, direct implication in the in the in the policy so uh, most of the policies uh, when there is a claim and dispute about the claim goes to lawyers, they have to review the policy, they have to read the, the wording, the contract, and they have to uh, come to the conclusion. No, it's not very uh, uh, black and white in the policy that this is covered, this is not covered, or if this happened, uh, uh, the coverage is not going to be there. There are some uh, uh, items like that, but uh, there are several uh, cases that uh, uh, should go to lawyer to uh, read the wording and uh, make a decision about if the contract pays or doesn't pay. Yes, always go to the lawyer at the end of the day. Yes, always. <laughs> we have another question. If a business has a contribution of business insurance or key person in insurance, can they make any claims right now? Is that a clear question? Uh, I didn't understand if, if, the, if the question is about the business insurance or about the key person, because there are two different things. Um, if a business has, sorry, a continuation of business insurance or mm -hmm. key person insurance, if okay. that makes sense. 
um, uh, can they make any claims? I guess you can uh, explain about either or. Okay, uh, continuation of business or business interruption. That's what the that's the, that's what the word we are using in uh, in insurance uh, industry. Uh, okay. Every business insurance has a part of uh, part of that policy is business interruption, and business interruption one of the biggest uh, uh, biggest part of each uh, business insurance. However, the definition that business insurance carries is. Uh, based on if something happened to business itself if there is a property damage for example if there is a water damage in the building or in the business itself and the business uh, cannot work and because of that uh, uh, gap in the business activity the business owner loses the uh, their income or the business itself loses the income then the business interruption will apply and will pay uh, what happened today with COVID-19, there is nothing happened to the property. There is no uh, direct damage to the, to the uh, business itself. And therefore, the business interruption doesn't, uh, doesn't apply. Uh, right now, we have several challenges in court and several uh, back and forth between the insurance companies and the government and uh, uh, some of the associations for the different business groups. Uh, that they are pushing for business interruption or pushing insurance companies to put the, uh, to pay business interruptions, and uh, unfortunately, business interruption is not covered. The wording that uh, the policy has clearly defined business interruption as uh, a, a direct uh, result of uh, damage to the business, and COVID nineteen is not like that. The only association that I uh, am aware and they had some kind of a business interruption that covers uh, uh, COVID-19 is the dentist association and they had a uh, special uh, uh, policy with, uh, with uh, uh, one of the insurance company that offers them uh, 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 pandemic insurance business interruption. And even that has a very limited coverage, which is not going to cover dentists, uh, dentists' offices uh, for the amount of the damage that they are facing. But it's it's the only thing that I know is available for that group of uh, uh, that group of uh, businesses. Uh, and even the dentists that they were not with that group, they don't have that business. No, continuous uh, business continuity insurance or business interruption. Unfortunately, unfortunately, is not available to businesses that they closed because of COVID-19. Is there anything else you can add to that with regards to commercial insurance or for plazas or anything else that you can add to that? Because I know there's a lot of businesses that cannot afford their rent anymore. And what happens with uh, the landlord's policies? Uh, one thing that uh, uh, every business owner can use and every business owner can actually talk to their insurance broker to see if they can uh, benefit from this part or not. Uh, in general, the pricing of the business insurance is based on the amount of the income that that business has. That's one of the main, main questions that we ask from any business, either at the beginning of their insurance when they, uh, when they go to a broker or uh, uh, most of the time, even on an uh, uh, annual basis when it's time to renew their policy. Uh, now, that now that the business is closed and that business doesn't make any money and their annual income uh, automatically dropped, one thing that they have to, uh, uh, they can do is get in touch with their broker or the insurance company that they are dealing with and inform them from that uh, 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 decrease in their uh, annual uh, revenue. And that might give them, uh, not, not might, that will give them a little bit of discount in their insurance, but uh, it's not 50 or 60% uh, decrease in their premium. It's probably something between five to 10%, maybe even less than that, or around that area. Uh, as a business owner, we can't forget that uh, uh, although the business is closed and there is no revenue, the business still exists and there are uh, uh, coverages that we still need even if the business is not open. Uh, 
and I'm not I'm going to talk about that business not open because it's very important for business owners to know the limitations of their policies. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in uh, in detail in a few minutes. But uh, when when uh, let's say there is a gym, gym gyms are closed now, but right. they have uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of equipment inside. And although the gym is closed, if there is a fire damage or if there is a broken pipe and there is a water damage or a theft or something, still the business owner need insurance. Still they need coverage for that uh, uh, event that happened, whatever it is, the incident that happened. So uh, they need to keep the policy and they, make, they need to make sure that the policy is uh, going forward. Now, the option of uh, deferred payment is available. Uh, because they don't have income, they can contact their broker and get some extra discount on their policy. Uh, but uh, it's important th that they know that the business uh, has different needs and the insurance must be in place. Just don't cancel the policy or don't, don't let the policy lapse because your business is closed right now. Uh, because everything else that you have in that property is insured and you need insurance. Now, uh, one thing that, or couple items that the, the business owners should be aware that uh, uh, when the business is closed, uh, most of the business insurance policies, commercial policies, have uh, have a clause that the commercial location shouldn't be vacant for more than thirty days. Now that we are either very close to uh, that 30 days that uh, uh, the business is closed or we already passed. I encourage everybody who's listening to get in touch with your broker, make uh, uh, make a request to, to your broker or to your insurance company to extend that uh, 30 days period. They can do that. And most of the insurance company, they are doing it, uh, but it's based on requests. So if that gym that we had uh, used as an example uh, is vacant for more than 30 days and then all of a sudden there is a fire or water damage or something that uh, there is damage to the property, the insurance company, the, the, the contract that right now the uh, policy owner has or the gym owner has, uh, basically make that policy null and void because the 30 days vacancy passed. So uh, that 30 days vacancy is very important. So uh, uh, part of the policy, and I encourage everybody to get in touch with their broker or the insurance company and make sure that that, uh, that 30 days is uh, at least temporarily removed from the policy. That's, uh, that's so one. Even though, um, so if you own a business and you've been closed for over 30 days, you're suggesting that all business owners need to contact their insurance company in order yes. to inform them yes. of vacancy for the past yes. or being, the business being closed for the past 30 days. That's right. Correct? That's Otherwise, right. even though, even if you're still paying your insurance, automatically is um, canceled, if I understand? It's not canceled, but the insurance company uh, refuses to pay if there is a damage in the property. Okay. Because that 30 days, uh, 30 days vacancy has passed. Correct. Uh, the, the other option that uh, business owners should be aware of is the change in the business. Uh, I mentioned that a little bit at the beginning when I was talking about our own brokers or uh, other insurance brokers. Uh, most of the policies, uh, let's say a restaurant policy, most of the policy uh, that restaurant owners have is for the location for people to go there sit there have food and come out and uh, uh, most of the policies are excluding any uh, web-based or online transactions that the business owner has uh, now that uh, the business uh, setup has changed most of the restaurants are now offering online orders and delivery uh, our own office, instead of we going to the office, now we are working from home. So we have to have our insurance policies uh, uh, modified 
or at least our insurance companies aware of changes that we have done. Now, if I am ordering the food from a restaurant that doesn't have any uh, coverage for online orders, uh, or doesn't have any coverage for delivery, or when they did the policy uh, at the beginning, the insurance company asked them, do you do any delivery? And they said, no. Now, 100% of their income is from delivery. So if, if there is any claim, if there is any uh, uh, lawsuit against uh, that restaurant, the food was bad or made somebody go sick or or whatever other claims or incidents that can create uh, a claim that and get involved in, uh, insurance company involved, uh, the insurance policy can can be uh, uh, rejecting any payment to the customer. So most of the business owners that they had to adjust to new environment and new uh, reality, and they had to change the. Uh, business activity to adjust to this, they have to tell the, ins the insurance company what are those adjustments and they have to get a, their approval that uh, uh, either as a temporary basis or uh, a, a, a change in the policy for, uh, for a longer period of time is necessary for their insurance policy to pay in case of a claim. So these two, uh, the being 30 days vacant and change in the policy, oh, sorry, change in the business activity or the way that the business works is very important for business owners to, uh, to be aware of communicate and also communicate it with the insurance policy, with the insurance company and get their policy modified. Correct, you do need to update your insurance company. Yes because of the change that they are doing all the changes correct yeah. and make sure you qualify that you're covered with that yes. department and uh we have another question what about the key person insurance could one be covered of um if they got infected or have to stay in quarantine uh, the key insurance uh, policy is uh, a life or critical illness policy and uh, we go back to your previous question. If critical policy pays for the person who gets uh, uh, infected, uh, then it doesn't matter if it's a key person or it's not a key person. If the policy doesn't pay, again, it doesn't matter if it's a key person or it's not a key person. Uh, quarantine doesn't uh, affect uh, the critical illness or life insurance. A life insurance, definitely somebody should die for the policy to pay. So quarantine doesn't uh, meet that criteria. And again, quarantine, uh, uh, sorry, uh, again, uh, the critical illness insurance, if they pay, it doesn't matter if it's a key person or, uh, or uh, somebody buys the insurance for themselves. If they don't pay, again, it doesn't matter. So the key person, being key person doesn't change the policy in general. Okay, great. Um, anything else you would like to add on? Well, I had uh, I, I wanted to, to, to talk about a, a different type of insurance also. At, uh, it's a group insurance for some of the offices or maybe some of your uh, clients have businesses that they are offering group insurance to their custom or to their to their employees. Uh, there is a relief program for group insurance uh, policies too. Uh, again, if you have a policy, please contact your broker to make sure that. Uh, uh, you can uh, benefit that relief program. Uh, they don't have a deferred program so far. They did not offer any deferred payments option. But what they are offering is uh, uh, a, a refund uh, for part of the uh, policy. Now, because people drive less and people uh, don't go to dentists or people don't uh, use their policies in general, uh, the group insurance policies, the health group insurance policies, as much as uh, in a normal scenario where they go to work on a daily basis, uh, those insurance companies are offering some refund for the customers. Uh, it's again, uh, some uh, different from one insurance company to the other. Some companies are offering 25% of one month payment. The other companies are offering uh, even uh, 
uh, more than that uh, uh, for for one or two payments or monthly payments. So again, if you are carrying a group insurance for your uh, team members, uh, contact your broker and contact your insurance company and make sure that uh, uh, you you can take uh, advantage of the benefits that's available to you. Excellent. Um, we have a few more questions on um, on pausing policies, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one on car, and also we have someone asking what if their car has been parked and they're not using it as much, uh, would they be able to contact their insurance company um, um, in order to get a discount or defer those payments while their car is parked, especially if it's finance? versus lease? Uh, yes, yeah, for finance company, for finance cars and own cars, uh, you always have the option to park your car. You contact your uh, insurance broker or you contact your insurance company and you tell them that your car is parked and you are not using it. They change the policy, as I mentioned before, you can take even uh, 75, 80, 85% uh, reduction in your annual premium. Uh, you have to be aware that you cannot drive that car even uh, even for uh, a minute. Even you take it to uh, a, a driveway and bring it back to the garage, you can't do that. And uh, I uh, definitely encourage people or uh, recommend to keep the car in a private parking somewhere that uh, uh, it's not the car is not accessible to any other traffic. Because if you park your car and somebody hits your car while your, park, your car is parked, uh, there is no coverage for the car because that, uh, that type of uh, incident is not uh, under the uh, uh, comprehensive only uh, policy that I uh, explained before. Uh, leased companies, uh, sorry, leased cars uh, are a little bit more difficult because uh, as I mentioned, the car doesn't belong to you. You are renting a car for a long period of time, maybe three years, maybe four years, and you can't make a decision for the insurance of a car that it doesn't belong to you. However, because of the COVID-19, most uh, some of these uh, leasing companies are showing a little bit of flexibility and uh, uh, give uh, written permission to customers to park their cars. Uh, talk to your leasing company first if they are they are offering that option to you then you can send that uh, uh, written uh, uh, approval from leasing company to your insurance broker or your insurance company and ask them to park the car uh, but again when you're parking the car you have to be aware of uh, coverages that you have or you're missing and you have to be aware of that you cannot drive the car uh, at all Correct. So from what I understand, there is a lot of discount um, opportunities out there for people with all types of different insurances, right? To be in touch with your insurance company and broker in order to discuss discount opportunities. Uh, I, effective, yes. Um, you know, with result to COVID-19. Correct? Uh, yes. Uh, insurance companies are actually... Uh, uh, very understanding in this situation and they are doing their best to accommodate people. They are doing their best, best to help people as far as the uh, uh, payment reliefs or deferral in payments uh, or discounts that they are offering to, uh, they are offering to their customers. So uh, uh, if, if you are not using your car as, uh, even if you're using your car, but not as as extensive that you were using it before this COVID-19 situation, still there are uh, discounts that you can use. So contact your broker and tell them, or your insurance company and tell them that you are not driving to car on a daily basis, but you're driving your car only maybe once a week for uh, doing grocery or something like that. And they can change the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the commute that you have, the, the, the commute distance that you had in your policy or your annual driven kilometer that you had in your policy and that offers you even uh, an extra discount. So even if you're driving the car, you don't want to park it, uh, there are still discounts that you can use 
uh, if your uh, the usage of the card that you have has been changed. So uh, get in touch with your broker, talk to your uh, insurance company, and see if those changes can uh, can offer you some discount. Excellent. Um, we have a question about car um, insurance again that was just sent to me. Um, if you have two cars, both leased, if you are not using one car and stop the policy on one, do you still have the accident coverage from the other car? Yes, yeah. If you have two cars, uh, leased or not leased, doesn't matter. If you have two cars and you uh, both cars are insured, uh, you can park one car and use the comprehensive only because the accident benefit option that I mentioned is automatically uh, on the other car that has uh, road coverage or has a, a complete coverage, if I can use that word. But uh, uh, it doesn't matter if it leased or not leased. Again, if you want to park your car, although you have AB, claim, AB uh, coverage on the other car, because the car is leased, you have to get your uh, uh, lessor approval before you do anything. Excellent. But uh, you don't need accident benefit coverage uh, as long as you have one car with the uh, road coverage on the, on the policy. And does pausing your insurance policy or parking your auto insurance impact your future renewal with that insurance company? No, it doesn't impact anything. Uh, you have the option to park your car. Uh, it's not uh, It's not only for COVID-19. It was always available. Uh, as I mentioned, sometimes people have, have cars that uh, they are not suitable for winter. They park them during the winter time. Sometimes uh, they do the other way around on summertime. They park the other car, which is a bigger car, maybe a four wheel drive or something, and use that fancy car that they have for summertime. Uh, so this option is available. It was available all the time, and it's still available. Uh, you always have this option, and you always can use it, and it can give you some uh, some extra discount if you don't use your car. Excellent. And if somebody scratch your car while it's in park, would you be wise to call the insurance company for repair? Uh, it depends how the scratch is coming from. If somebody hits your car and they run away, or even if they don't run away, they come forward and say, okay, I hit your car. This is uh, part of the collision coverage that each insurance, that each policy must have. And when you are parking your car, you're losing that coverage. So if somebody hits your car and uh, there is a damage to your car, no, unfortunately, you don't have coverage. And that's why I recommend everybody, if you're putting your car on comp only or you're parking your car, park it in a private parking space that nobody has access to. Uh, if you're parking your car in a, a basement of the, a building, uh, uh, in a parking spot that your the building assigned to you, there is always a chance that somebody hits your car and you have no course of uh, actions if you don't have a full coverage on your car. So uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that coverage is not available when you're parking the car. However, if the, park, the car is parked and let's say a tree falls on your car and there is a damage to your car, this is covered under park car policy. So it's it's getting a little bit more complicated. It's getting a little bit more uh, uh, specific what happened, but uh, accident in general for a park car is not covered. Perfect, so that's just a general thing regardless of the situation or not. Yes, yeah. Excellent. And um, we're coming towards the end of the webinar, and I'd like to know if you have any advice for realtors that are seeking insurance, such as um, bundle packaging, such as life insurance, car insurance. What is it that specifically you can you know, advise us that would be to our benefit? Uh, what I can uh, advise everybody, not even realtors alone, uh, everybody, is that uh, we are, we are going through a very uncertain time. We are going through a very tough time. And uh, 
I, I understand. I am a consumer too. I understand that we are we are trying to cut our uh, expenses. We are trying to save some cost, and we are trying to uh, uh, make a balance between losing an income and uh, monthly expenses that we have. And insurance is one of the uh, first targets that people uh, uh, aim to. Uh, but uh, don't do anything without uh, getting advice from your insurance brokers. Uh, I have seen in this uh, a few four or five weeks, I have seen businesses that they call and say, okay, I don't want insurance because I don't uh, make any money, cancel my insurance. Uh, I had this conversation a couple of days ago uh, with the restaurant owner. Uh, without any consideration that the restaurant, the, the uh, chairs, tables, the fridge, the kitchen, everything that they had in the restaurant is part of the insurance. And although they don't have any money or they don't make any money, sorry, I don't have any customer, they don't have any money, but uh, keeping that insurance is important because of the other coverages that it's part of that policy. So before you make any decisions as far as uh, cutting a cost or canceling a policy or uh, removing a coverage that you think you don't need, always seek professional advice before you uh, uh, you finalize your decision and uh, uh, be, in, be in touch be in contact with your uh, advisor with your broker with your insurance company always uh, get the advice before the fin before finalizing the decision and is it the best to contact your insurance broker or insurance your insurance company because myself when a few times i had to call my insurance company um i wasn't sure whether i should contact the company or my broker which one is the best contact and which one um has uh, the our best interest in mind uh, if you have a broker always deal with broker always always deal with your broker uh, when i'm uh, i i always in uh, in the last uh, uh, last hour or so when we had a conversation all of I always said talk to your insurance company or talk to your broker not because i want to replace the insurance company with the broker or broker with the insurance company but because we have both options available here or we have both systems available there are insurance companies that you are dealing only with public directly for example TD Bank, RBC, uh, those uh, companies, they don't use broker. So if you need to ask them a question, you have to talk to, to them directly. And that's why I said talk to your insurance company. But uh, there are companies or there are uh, a, a big group of companies that they are working with brokers. Uh, if you are with the company that uses broker, always, always, always use your broker, contact your broker, get advice from them before you make any decisions. But if the company that you're dealing with doesn't have any broker, the only choice that you have is talking to your insurance company directly. Great. And our last question is, shall realtors in general have commercial used car insurance? Uh, yes, it's not commercial car use insurance. It's called business use insurance. Uh, type of the insurance that uh, insurance companies are offering for cars are th three different types. Personal car, I go to my work and I come back, it's commute. Uh, business use, uh, it's good for salespeople, including myself or any realtor that's uh, listening to this uh, conversation or salesperson in any uh, type of business. And commercial use, which is mostly for uh, contractors, the one that they are uh, transferring tools or equipment in their truck or in their car. Uh, the sales, uh, the, the, the second group business insurance is suited for salespeople uh, because we are using our car more than a regular uh, uh, employee that goes to the office and come home. We can go to different people. We can actually uh, see different people in one day. We have uh, short visits and uh, 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 more, more visits per day than uh, a normal uh, employee that goes to work and therefore we need business insurance to uh, cover us properly. I, I, I encourage everybody as a salesperson to use business insurance on their car rather than just a commute insurance. Great advice. 
And actually, last question that wasn't the last question is going to be my question. And I want to know about life insurance. Um, is there a certain age that people should apply for it? And what is a recommended age? What is the age that you advise people and to enter into the market to get and apply for life insurance? Well, life insurance is a very long topic. Uh, I'm not going to go to the details of that. But as far as your question, the sooner the better. The younger, the better. Uh, first of all, because it's cheaper. Second, because people are healthier. And if the type of the insurance that they are purchasing is the type that I mentioned uh, uh, has a cash value and has some flexibility as far as the payment, uh, when we were talking about COVID-19 and relief for life insurance companies, uh, then that policy will generate more saving for you because you have it for a longer period of time. Uh, life insurance doesn't have any age restrictions as far as how soon we can start. Uh, if uh, I, I can tell you the best time to buy life insurance is at the time of the birth for a kid. So a baby born, it's the best time to buy life insurance. It's not, uh, it's never late, but it, and it's never too soon. So uh, the sooner, the better. Got it. Thank you so much, Mr. Jazairi, for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you on PICRA. And um, thank you for everyone else who joined us today. And I would like to invite everybody to join us again next week, Friday, at the same time at 3 p.m. We will have a wonderful speaker to speak of COVID-19 and taxation. Um, our wonderful lawyer, Ms. Julia Ghazi, will be joining us next week. And thanks again to everybody. Have a safe and wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And I hope that I could uh, uh, bring you some clarity as far as the insurance is concerned during this time. Absolutely. You did great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.